Boston defeats the Mavericks 106 to 99. For me, I think the biggest thing, like I'm I'm looking at their their duo, right? Like Dallas's duo is Luka and Kyrie. Boston's duo is Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They were yeah. outscored. Dallas outscored Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum 62 to 61. Right. So it was only a one point differential, but technically they did their job. The stars cancel each other out. Now, what happened is it's the role players, right? I'm looking at Sam Hauser. He's got nine points. Al Horford's got eight points. Drew Holiday's got nine points. Derek Wright's got six, got 16 points. And mind you, every single game this series, that uh that list of people who who um put up points as well as like role players changes up every single every single game. So sometimes it's not Derek White. Sometimes it's it's Drew Holiday putting up 16 and Derek White's got nine or Hauser's got eight, but Al Horford's got 12 or something like that. However, and also too, mind you, Porzingis didn't play last night too, right? So that was the biggest thing. When I was watching the first quarter, I was looking at uh, a lot of my takeaways in the first quarter when Dallas had began to have the lead by 13 points, which, man, this this looks like this is going to be Dallas's game. They went up quick, yeah. went up fast. No Porzingis is out there. So now I'm looking at some of these empty possessions by Boston. I'm thinking, man, you know, uh, Porzingis, he would normally hit those minis. He would be in the paint. The Dallas went straight to the paint. They attacked the paint. It was it was great, honestly, great ball movement. It didn't look like anything was done too much. That was the first quarter. I honestly, when I'm, I just want you to know, when I ended the first quarter, my first quarter takeaways, it was... No Porzingis will Tatum step up because he had started. He was missing a couple of those shots. This is all first quarter. More space, Dallas. Like, they're moving the ball. They're creating more space. They're able to get to the paint. Boston looks frazzled. This is when they had the lead by 13 points in the in the first quarter. Boston looks frazzled. Boston looks regular without Porzingis. <laughs> I mean, I'll you want to know? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you want to know what the last thing I wrote down was? After all of that, Porzingis, nothing Dallas can do. <laughs> hey, nothing Dallas can do. That was the. That's when I. That's when I stopped writing takeaways. So it started off looking really good for Boston. Um, I mean, looking really good for Dallas. They were doing what they were supposed to do. Everything was fluid. Everything was nice. It was movement. Kyrie's hitting those threes. He's getting started early. I believe he had 20 points before the first half. However, though, even having 20 points before the first half, only being up by one point, that was kind of alarming. Like, I didn't really think about it at halftime because I'm thinking, all right, like, you know, everybody's kind of getting settled. There were some empty possessions, like Boston, still Boston, but I didn't really look too deep into it. It wasn't until that third quarter where they got outscored 35 to 19 that I was like, yo, there's actually nothing Dallas can do, right? There's nothing Dallas can do. <clears throat> yeah, and that's what I, that was. That was one of my biggest takeaways. This game was won in the third quarter. To me, I felt the game was over in the third quarter. And the biggest reason why I felt it was over was because of Luka and Kyrie. It wasn't so much that, that they that they weren't scoring. It was the fact that every possession, it just looked like it was Kyrie. Or it was Luca holding the ball for the entire shot clock. It was making my stomach hurt. I was actually not entertained. Like I was really, yeah. really, it, it was really, really bad. And as Boston started to, to slowly gain the lead, because although it looks like, okay, they it was a, a, a large point differential in the third quarter. You also have to remember, too, that game, there was like 10 lead changes in the third quarter. But before Boston went on that 20-something run, it was like 10, 10 or so lead changes. Yep. And you're thinking about that, and it looks close, but then as Boston started to go up by five, go up by seven, go up by ten, it was nothing but Luka or Kyrie holding the ball. And if you're Boston's defense, that is the best thing you can see being on the road in game three. Because you don't have to you don't have to you don't have to plan for anything. You know your your defense can can get stops without a doubt. And you only have to worry about stopping two guys. So there's no ball movement, mind you. So nobody else is getting their touches off. And at some point, it looked like Tim Hardaway was actually forcing his shots off. Not not saying they were bad shots, but it was just he knew if he passed the ball, he wasn't going to see it again. And that's when it was kind of alarming because now those guys aren't getting touches. Those guys aren't getting warmed up. It was just Luka and Kyrie. And Boston, mind you, they coming down. They're swinging the ball. 
five or six times. Open three in the corner. Open three at the top of the key. Nothing. Nothing. It got everything they wanted. And that's when I stopped taking. That's when I stopped getting, looking at takeaways. Because although Jason Tatum stepped up, of course, he could have stepped up at any game throughout this. Uh, in this series, he could have stepped up at any point. But when you got Porzingis there, as also when I started to notice the Porzingis effect, it was like Boston, it was it looked like a regular game at first. And the funny part about it was I started to notice like that's when Porzingis has his effect, right? Because if, if you're if you if your team can't get scored, can't score, and their team can't score, and you're having these like dead zones, stalemate sort of offense in the game, that's when Porzingis would hit that shot. And it's like you got poor. So I think it was uh, eight, eight possessions, eight or nine possessions. Boston didn't score on. I think uh, it might have been the same way for for Dallas too. It was like a, a tie point in the game. I believe it was the second quarter. That's when I started to realize half of those possessions that Boston took that didn't score would have been a Porzingis touch midi seven foot over some six foot defender, and he would have got the ball off. And that's why games one and two didn't look close by the time the third quarter rolled around. So. That was something else I, I noticed. Um, yeah, man, then, I tell you what, mm-hmm. I feel like Boston really relied on their guys. I mean, yes, they only went what eight deep. They only went eight deep. Hauser nine points, fourteen minutes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pritchard and Tillman eleven minutes. You know, they didn't do much, but eleven minutes. You yeah. know. Yeah. They, you know, but Tatum forty two. Brown forty one, Horford Horford thirty seven, you yeah. know he's ice his legs. Drew yeah. Holiday forty two, Derek White forty two. They relied on their guys, yeah, and they showed up. The Mavericks they went, I mean one two three four, ten deep, yeah, ten deep, you yeah. know, ten deep and, and with no real bench production. Yeah. Uh, you take away the starting lineup. I mean, you had Derek Lively. They gave you 30 minutes, 11 and 13, yeah. you know. But they basically, I mean, Derek Jones Jr., 16 minutes. Gafford, 16 minutes. Those yeah. are starters. Yeah, Those are starters, you know what I'm saying, that you're only playing 16 minutes. So, obviously, you couldn't rely on those guys. That they got played out of the game. And yeah. then – from that point on, you know, what does kid even do? You got Josh Green, Tim Hardaway. I mean, Tim Hardaway didn't even score in 19 minutes. I got you out there for 19. What the hey, yeah. what the yeah. hell I got you out there for 19 minutes for? You got zero Facts. points. Facts. Zero. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. you, you ain't seen none of these on Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Facts, like, Facts, and like Facts. you got the overall, bro. The truth is, overall, this was Dallas game to really win. Right, Absolutely. point points in the paint, fifty two to thirty six Dallas way, right? Yeah. Uh, um, free throws, fourteen to sixteen Dallas way. Yeah. Uh, rebounds, right? A re- who yeah. out rebounds usually tells a, a lot of the story. Dallas won the rebound battle, forty three okay. to thirty six. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here's a big difference, and this is where Dallas, I feel like, has been struggling to really make a difference in this series yeah. assist 15 to 26 yeah boston's way yeah. right boston's moving that ball around there was a play where Kyrie, i mean he looked lost you yeah. know what i'm saying he looked yeah. lost like oh you know where did yeah. he yeah. should take brown shooting now yeah you know what i'm saying yeah like yeah not that you know you're expecting you know great things out of Kyrie's defense but you know what i'm saying absolutely like those guys are looking lost out there. That that third mm-hmm. quarter, they look confused. Yeah, they look confused, man. Yeah, like uh, I mean, you got what Boston seventeen to forty six from the three, thirty seven percent. Dallas was nine to twenty five. Yeah, nine to twenty five. Yeah. Dallas, like I don't know the exact numbers, but I know Dallas shot a lot more than nine made threes throughout these playoffs throughout the season. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You're not getting you're not really getting to your spots. Um Luca, like I said, I don't care about the hurt shit because you're playing. You know what I'm saying? Liability yeah. on defense. You can't stop nobody and you didn't outscore nobody. Yeah. Fact of the matter. You know what I'm saying? This is a game where you needed 40 from Luca, 35 yeah. from Kyrie. You guys yeah. win. 
you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Take it another game four, tie this thing up, make it a series, you know. Yeah. Series don't start somebody went on the road. Well, series started, series ended. It's three up. Facts. You know? Facts. Yeah. I get it, it's not over till it's over, but at the end of the day, yeah. there's no Dallas don't have enough to pull out four wins. Yeah. Not yeah. happening. You know, and you saw uh Tatum and Brown, man, the way they embraced each other at the end of the game. It was like, hey, this finally, man, finally, you yeah. know. Yeah. But I will say this, though. I want to know what you think about this, man. Joel B put out a tweet. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, he said, uh, did Milwaukee Bucks give Boston a ring? <laughs> right. <laughs> and everybody was pointing to because of the trade, Drew Holiday, yeah. you know, yeah. like adding Drew plus Giannis being injured. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just it, it looked like because now you you look back on it, man. They gave up what Marcus Smart mm-hmm. for Drew. Worth it. Hell yeah, worth it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You get you get basically the same level of defense, and you get a guy that can actually do something on offense a little more than Smart can. Yeah. Um, it. I mean, it's. Just, it's Boston's, you know what I'm saying? And that's why while everybody is talking about is, is Jason Tatum the, the the best guy, is Jalen Brown the best guy? That's why a lot of people are pointing to Brad Stevenson as <laughs> this finals MVP should go to him. The moves that he made and the things that he put together for, for this team. Um, Drew Holiday obviously was a great addition to it. I'm pretty sure we talked about it when the trade happened. We wasn't sure where Boston would end up with it. But me and you both know about Drew Holiday's past. Me And I'm speaking on 2K. I'm speaking on 2K. I'll never forget when you had the when when Drew Holiday was with the Pelicans, I believe, with Rondo and Demarcus Cousins, AD, AD. that yep, Twin yep. Towers, and and that that backcourt. That was and a I squad. Always, a squad. I would always get the the Blazers or something like that, and was able to see how effective um, good defense can can really be. And Drew Holiday adds adds that to any team that he's gone to. All also a champion too as well. It's actually pretty. Um, it, it was kind of overlooked. It, it was kind of overlooked. Um, and I only say that because even when we started to talk about this finals, the biggest thing that we were speaking on was Boston's depth. And Drew Holiday is such a he has such a weird fit in this Boston, uh, in this Boston roster. He has such a weird fit to me. Because you already have good defense, you already have good role players, but you added in a guy who could be a number two or number or number three on most teams, and he was a number four option, I believe, on Boston or a number five option. Um, so yes, I do believe Milwaukee handed uh, Boston the, the the championship. But also, this is kind of why I wanted Denver to to get to this point and not um, and not the Mavericks. Like I, once Denver was out, I kind of just didn't care who came out of the West. And I figured the offense that Kyrie and Luca brings to the table, I figured that would be enough to to um to at least make anything a series for whoever came out of the East. And yeah. uh I would have wanted to see Denver here in this position. And but it, it all comes down to um to matchups at the end of the day. And this is just a prime example of it. Um, this is just a prime example of it. How do you feel about Drew Holiday's addition to to Boston? Hey man, it's a big difference. A big difference. And what you got to think about what they what they did in the finals uh, last time they were in the finals, how that looked, and how this looks. Yeah. You know, I mean, they weren't up on the Warriors at one point. The Warriors, you know, reeled it off, but you can tell, man, like that championship pedigree from Drew, big, mm-hmm. very big. You know, what I'm saying, I'm sure that's big in the locker room, but also just the experience from Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Yeah, like yeah. we've been in these moments. It's been hard, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we talked about before, you know, it feels like Tatum tries to bring the dog out, whereas Brown, all dog. Nice. You know, all dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Posting up, getting to his midi, knocking down a three, getting to the paint, whatever he honestly, Brown doing whatever he wants to out there. Yeah. You know, he had a 38 and 8. You know what I'm saying? Brown doing whatever he wants to out there to them boys, realistically. Thanks. Like Thanks. Cole, you know what I'm saying? And then they're targeting Luca. They're targeting Luca. We want you. You know Thanks. what I'm saying? Who the who the hell was ever targeting Bron? Targeting Kobe. You were never tar- you were you weren't calling screens over to get Kobe Thanks. on you. You know Thanks. what I'm saying? In the Thanks. finals? 
You weren't calling Bron over to get him on you in the finals. Thanks. You know, I mean, hey, bro, I mean, you think about it like, I mean, name me a, like, you know what I'm saying, a star of that caliber. Maybe you could say Curry. You know what I'm saying? But, I, you know, you wasn't calling KD in those screens to come out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we want you, you know? Well, that's the problem. And you see so, Go ahead. Huh? I was going to say, so that's that's the that's also another big factor. That's why Golden State won that series. It, it, Golden State, it's not like Luka has – it's not like Luca has another. Um, it's not like he has a, a defensive two. You know what I'm saying? A defensive two, three, four, and five that can put up points the way they put up points. His other option is Kyrie. Not saying Kyrie is is obviously that's a great option, but as far as defensive assignments go, like it's one thing if you, like is you can disguise Curry. You can't disguise two people in the backcourt because as you pointed to in, in that third quarter when Jalen Brown hits the three, who whose head was on a swivel? It was Kyrie. Kyrie. Like he lost the ball. And he's guarding Jalen Brown. He's Jalen Brown is a wave. And and you saw it too. Every time Kyrie was on Jalen Brown or somebody else was on Jalen Brown, they would go after him. They would attack the basket. If they if it looked like they had a lane to the basket and it was just Kyrie on there, they would attack the basket. You see Derek White did it, you see Drew Holiday does it, you see Jalen, they'll pass up that three to drive to the paint with either of those two options on you. You know what I mean? So, you know, just adding to your point. That's bad. Oh, God. And I'll say this much, too. Luka fouled out with, with four minutes and 12 seconds, and they were down by one. So Dallas did cut this game close. Um, But he, he fouls out, and it was, what's funny to me is, although it seemed close, like there was like a three-point differential for like three minutes, I'm pretty sure three minutes of that game, 93 to 90. Um, although it seemed close, to me, it's this is exactly what's been happening all the series long for um for Boston. Whenever I mean for Dallas, whenever they need an absolute score and that and Boston needs an absolute stop, Boston gets the absolute stop every time. Every time in each of these games, there's been a point in the game where it was like, Dallas, if you can keep on scoring, Man, you can win this game. And they, they don't. And that's not luck. That is consistency now over three games. Yeah. I mean, bro, look at these games. The Mavericks don't have a second half in them. Game, game, game two, it was... Uh... Dallas was up three at the end of the first, and Dallas loses the second quarter by six, so they're only down three by half. Mm -hmm. Finish the game, you know, down seven. You know what I'm saying? Uh, The third game, only the first game was just a clear-cut, you know, clear-cut blowout, you know. But game two, game three, you're in those games at half. Third quarter does not go your way. And I don't think I don't think they've won a third quarter in any of these games. Actually, I need you double check on game one too. Game one, they won the third quarter, twenty four to twenty three. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Game yeah, yeah. two, you know, thirty to twenty three. Game three, thirty five to nineteen. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You not you don't have a second half, and you know, and in particular, Luca. Let's really talk about it. Yeah. Luca hasn't had a second half in not one game this series. Facts, facts. Not one game has Luca came out and really gave you a second half. Facts. He's going to, to halftime and, he, and he's already cooked. He's cooked. Yeah. Literally, but second half, no Luca. Yeah. And you had Kyrie struggling in the first two. Now you got Kyrie going off. But like I said, you know what I'm saying? Who's coming along with these guys? Facts. No one else. Thanks. No one else, like you said, it's just your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. And I don't yeah. think that's how they want to play, but it's like we in the finals and we gotta do something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you when you playing 2K, bro, it's like at the end of the day, who's my guy? Yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. I got an A. Yeah. I played my uh, little cousin the other day. You yeah, know, yeah. You know who mm-hmm. I you know, we you know, it's nice on the 2K. They got <laughs> eras now. You can you can do like Bron era, Kobe era, Jordan era, Magic Bird era, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like in the Bron era. You know, he picked, uh, <laughs> you know he he didn't he didn't know, bro. Like I grab I grab yeah. Rose, I grab uh, Rose. Yeah, Man, yeah. you already know what happened. 
I yeah. beat I beat him like fifty six and fifty three. You wanna know how much Rose had? Fifty yeah. out of fifty six. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah, I, I would live and die by that one. You know what I'm saying? You playing two K? If I had to play this matchup in two K, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I like Luca, but you know who I'm gonna use? Facts. You know, who, Facts. You know who I'm gonna Facts. use? Facts. I'm gonna live and die with Kyrie. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm gonna let Luca take his shots, but I'm gonna live and die with Kyrie, man. Because you just know it's, he's just a he's just a prolific scorer, right? Yeah. But you yeah. get to that other side of the ball, and y'all can't stop nothing. Y'all yeah. can't. The Boston let you back in the game. You didn't yeah. get back in the game. Boston yeah. took their foot off the gas. Thanks. And then, Thanks. and that's the difference between Boston before and Boston now. When they, when they, when you start coming back, are oh, they like, hold on, buck, 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 buck up, buck up? Yeah. Put the foot back on their neck. Yeah. Like, and no, they can do it at not. will. And you they know, can do at it at will. will. Yeah. At will. Yeah. You know? And I think just not having Porzingis also shows you just how elite this team is. Like, they only really needed the Drew trade. Porzingis was over the top. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Porzingis was. was over the top. Yeah, it, you know? it was. But how many years did we say Boston needed just need a point guard? Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Oh, For wow. years, we just kept saying, they just need a point guard, man. You I was disappointed when they got rid of Teddy Teddy uh, Terry Rozier. I figured like that was that would be their point guard that would take them, um, you know, with his progression because he was on that team that took Bron seven. Like they they had a different flow to their offense when he was there. When they switched up to Marcus Smart, it looked very different. I felt the same way. I felt yeah. the same. I thought Miami was gonna make a run because you know Miami got Terry. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. alone, I'm like, wait, Terry Hero. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, what's his wait. nickname? <laughs> Scary Terry. <laughs> Come on, you know, but Terry Terry didn't play in the playoffs. Jimmy yeah. didn't play in the playoffs. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, Boston might not even be here if those two guys are playing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, even look at, like I said, like, you know, because think about it, man. Like, it's just we've seen uh, Miami and we've seen um, Cleveland get a win off of Boston. But you could say the Cleveland one was the front of the guys. That Miami one was like they just outplayed you. Like they had a prolific game in them, you know. Yeah, Tyler yeah. Hero had to go off. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. they had a but they didn't game have. They didn't Miami have got that defense. You yeah. have to have defense against this team. You're you not do. going to just run and gun with them. Absolutely, it's just simply not. Yes. It's just simply not. Right? Unless you're the Indiana Pacers and your entire offense is built to just keep pushing, pushing, pushing the pace, pushing the pace, pushing the pace. Yeah, faster, but then they faster, have faster. They, they got zero defense. Zero defense. You know. So I mean, if you want to say realistically, the the games that looked the most interesting versus Boston was the Indiana games, and you also see Indiana their Indiana actually was like, we can score too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. I mean, it was like one or two of those games they had like five, six guys in double figures. Yo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you know, Boston begging, begging somebody to come along, facts. begging, bro. Facts, Literally, facts. You no, know, but. They're gonna have to make a move at the end of the day. Boston needs to bring in like a like I told you, they don't need much. I'm not saying get another star, but maybe get Miles Turner. You know what I'm Ooh, saying? You said Boston? Not Boston, Mavericks. Oh, Dallas. Mavericks. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, Dallas <laughs> gotta grab, they gotta grab that Porzingis, Porzingis, uh, you know, you know, Chris has Porzingis, like type kind of guy. You I know, know what, what you mean. Saying? Like, I know what you grab mean. Grab yeah, a big do. that can block and shoot. Yeah. Block and shoot. You know, lively, he can block and dunk. But guess what? You got uh, three other guys that do that. You block have to. Dunk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't need three guys blocking and dunking. You know what I'm saying? You need a guy that can block and shoot. Yeah. You know, stretch stretch out the defense. You know what I'm saying? And 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 help your you know help out your offense, stretching out the other opponent's defense, and then on defense you're helping keep things actually at bay. You know what I'm saying? Because you're a threat. You know. Yeah. And yeah. they don't have that other threat. Like, like, like we said, bro. Like, we're they're not gonna let one guy beat them. Kyrie's right. not gonna beat them alone. Luke is not gonna beat them alone. So it's either you both go off, or it's not gonna happen. Yeah. And you know, you heard the Luke. And I ain't gonna lie, man. Luke has seemed a little too happy go lucky for me. He fouled out smiling. Well, he don't have a choice. He, bro, he, does, he doesn't yeah, have he a got, choice. He got a choice. Now you see, you see, got champions. A, you got cheat. A choice. You follow now with a smile on your face, like ah, I mean, the refs they they belly you, like man, get the hey, every anybody who's talking about the refs is out of their mind. 
You don't get yeah. blown out 35 to 19 in the third quarter and then start talking about the refs. And yeah. Lucas sit there, he wants to complain, yep, 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 to the refs after every other play. And that's also like, a big reason why they went on that you're run. You're not getting back on defense. You sitting here talking to refs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's just looking bad. It's looking bad, man. You smiling way too damn much, bro. You yeah. smiling way too damn much to be in the finals. Thanks. Like, it's just, you know, it's a different league. You know what I'm saying? I watch Kobe. You know, we can even talk. Forget the guys that did it. Let's, I never seen DeMar DeRozan look happy in, in these, you know what I'm saying? True. Like, you can say a lot of guys, man, like, a lot of guys that didn't even get to where y'all at, they, they, come on. Well, guys like, who they, play defense? It sounds to me a lot that, of people you, know, you man, mentioned. You need that two way. DeRozan would actually be a good addition to, uh, Dallas, that would be a smart move by them. Yeah, it would um, be. you know, because you don't have to pay him too much, and he gives you that extra score, and he yeah. can be your third, everything, and he play both ways. I'm just gonna just go ahead and say this right now. This is we're gonna do a uh, a part two to this. This is great. I definitely still have some questions we're gonna answer in this next uh, part two. But yeah, as far as uh, our reaction goes, we I'm I'm on the same page with you. There's there's a lot of things that can that can change. Um, all in all, but yeah, we're gonna do a part two. Part two is gonna consist of how are the Celtics beating the Mavericks so easily. Is Jalen Brown better than Jason Tatum? And should Luca be blamed for this loss? That's why I was like, don't touch Luca. Just I can't wait to get into that Luca discussion because he's looking a bit iffy. But uh, we'll we'll touch that in uh in part in two. the finals. He's looking in the finals. finals in the finals. 